one of the things that we are doing here on the Tuesday show specifically, uh, which we call the news episode. So we have a news episode and then our Thursday show is more of a loose chat most of the time. Uh, and so Harry's here with me every Tuesday, and we go through some of the news of the day, a couple stories, some of the, the smaller stories. And uh, Thursday's just a, usually a little more of a loose chat, and Rob Kendall, our buddy, and Tad Western will be here Thursday. Uh, and so what, what we're doing on the Tuesday show now, the news show, is that we're doing something called the Path to Libertarianism. And I think it is important in this environment of constant news cycles, two-a-day news cycles, that it's, it's really easy to lose uh, sight of some of the basic libertarian principles. And so uh, every week we want to bring to you a segment. We're going to take a piece of the news and apply a libertarian principle and explain some basic foundational principle. And today's a doozy. Today's the non-aggression principle. Uh, so, you know, I was watching uh, TV, and my favorite pace person to hate on TV news is Chris Cuomo. Like I don't know what it is about him, but he just pisses me off. <laughs> he's he's got that jock face, and he's just dumb. Like you know, like Anderson Cooper, Aaron Burnett, they seem super intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know, they seem like Anderson Cooper. You could you could have a great conversation with that guy. He he's been so many places. He seems really smart. But Chris Cuomo, I don't know why he is he is giving the who does he have nudes of? <laughs> who's whose wife in a compromising position does he have? I don't know how he's been given uh th the shot that he has. But now uh Cuomo does this little segment uh called uh, closing arguments. And so after the rally there was some um violence in Charlottesville mm -hmm. uh part 2. And it wasn't the Nazis, because there were like 25 of them. It was all the Antifa people, you know, it, it dressed, like, dressed like ISIS, basically walking around. As we told you earlier in the show, Ford Fisher, a libertarian documentarian, basically got footage of them, which I put in the show notes if you actually want to go and watch it. Could you not attach things to the Trello while we're in the middle of the show? Because it goes beep. Let me quit my Trello here. Uh, so, so this is Chris Cuomo's brilliant thought at the end of his show, on whatever day this was. I don't, I don't have the date in front of me. One year since Heather Heyer was killed for standing up to hate, and our thoughts still go to her family. We know what happened with racial tensions nationwide after that, and this weekend was billed as round two, Unite the Right, the sequel. Organizers planned a rally in Washington, D.C. this time, but the turnout of white supremacists was thankfully pathetic, which is why I didn't have to go there and cover it. Only a couple of dozen showed up. Proof they lost membership after being exposed again last year as a bunch of hateful losers? No, they're still in force online, but they didn't have the guts to show up, and that's good. Counter-protesters did. There were good numbers of them. The vast majority were peaceful, but peppered in the crowd were members of Antifa or anti-fascists. They covered their faces, confronted police, and berated journalists, and that was wrong. Now, you've been hearing it. There's a lot of whataboutism and spin going on, and it's kind of sickening to me. So let's all agree on some common understandings. A protester uses their voice. Song, slang, slurs, there's a huge range, but it is talk. When you use your hands in a violent way, you are a rioter. And unless you're justified in defending yourself and you hit someone, you're a thug, you're a criminal. I mean, he nailed the non-aggression principle there. Yeah, slam yeah. dunk. If you had just stopped there. You attack cops, you slap the media, you are in the wrong, period. But I argue to you tonight, all punches are not equal. More oh. You were getting so close, bro. He did that, and then he <laughs> separated media and police because they're above people. Right. You know, they're separate class. <laughs> That's exactly right. Here we go. In the eyes of the law... Yes, but in the eyes of good and evil, here's the argument. If you're a punk who comes to start trouble in a mask and hurt people, you're not about any virtuous cause. You're just somebody who's going to be held to the standard of doing something wrong. But when someone comes to call out bigots and it gets hot, even physical, are they equally wrong as the bigot they are fighting? I argue no. Fighting against hate matters. Now, how you fight matters, too. There's no question about that. But drawing a moral equivalency between those espousing hate and those fighting it because they both resort to violence emboldens hate, legitimizes 
hateful belief and elevates what should be stamped out. That's what Trump did wrong last year when he said this. You said there was hatred, there was violence in most sense. Uh, are well, I do think, think there's blame, the yes. I think there's blame. Were. We must come together as a nation. I condemn all types of in senseless death. No. And all right, so he plays, uh, I just fast forward, because, you know, Trump, we heard that a million times when Trump was like, there's good people on both sides. So Donald Trump, this is a great example of it's never going to be enough. Right. Okay, so listen to what Donald Trump tweets on the one-year anniversary and listen to his reaction to it. And he proved he still believes that when he wrote this before this year's anniversary. The riots in Charlottesville a year ago resulted in senseless death and division. We must come together as a nation. I condemn all types of racism and acts of violence. Peace to all Americans. He needed to call out the bigots and the white supremacists. And he did. <laughs> so he says, peace to all Americans. Everyone's equal. I'm against racism. And then Cuomo was like, he needs to do this. It didn't go far enough. He didn't. Why? And why does he therefore have unprecedented support from these fringe elements of white power? Two wrongs and what is right. The big So what about I'm sure there are racists that listen to We Are Libertarians. Yeah. But that doesn't make Harry a racist. No. no. <laughs> it makes it's, no sense. Yeah, yeah and uh, it's like unprecedented unprecedented support. Right. It's just uh, right, as a uh, comedian, really? as Alonzo Bowden said, uh, n not not all Trump supporters are racist, but not all uh, not all Trump supporters are racist, but all racists are Trump supporters. That's not even true either. I don't know. Like a lot of racists do not like wait Trump like talks to black people oh, and hangs out with black. Yeah, they, uh, I've been in Southern India a little. Bigots are wrong to hit. Antifa or whomever, anarchist or malcontent or misguided, they are also wrong to hit. But fighting hate is right. And in a clash between hate and those who oppose it, those who oppose it are on the side of right. Think about it. Civil rights activists, were they the same morally as the bigots, as the racists with whom they exchanged blows? Are people who go to war? against an evil regime on the same moral ground as those they seek to stop from oppressing the weak. When you punch me in the nose for being Italian and you say I'm somehow less than, am I in the same moral place when I punch you back for saying that? It's not about it being right in the eyes of the law, but you also have to know what's right and wrong in a moral, in a good and evil sense. That's why people who show up to fight against bigots are not to be judged the same as the bigots, even if they do resort to the same kinds of petty violence. The law will take care of that. How you disagree matters. We should be our best. But I am arguing that Trump was wrong to create a moral equivalency between bigots and those who oppose them, making them equal wrongs. Those hateful few who take solace and a encouragement from the president's efforts my message to you is simple be aware there are many more of us who see you as unequal as less than and you will be opposed at every turn because what you are about is wrong and fighting you is right there's the sense that there's like eight million racists in every town. <laughs> mm -hmm. Around every corner. E there's every Dairy everywhere. Queen. Every right. Dollar Tree. We're like in a red scare of racism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's the red square. Yeah. That they all, and for eight years they've been sleeping. Right. Okay, they didn't do anything for eight whole years. You know, and then they just come out of the woodwork. Just everywhere. But, right. Everywhere, you know. With their Thomas Sowell books and their... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Reading Walter Williams, Williams. everywhere. Yeah, how dare they, you know? <laughs> uh, can you be le racist and listen to Walter Williams? Yeah, because Christopher Cantwell likes Walter Williams, which right. is still strange. But anyways, he even got Walter Williams on his show. I don't even know how that was even freaking pop. Piece. Honestly, I think Cantwell's just a faker. Yeah, he's I think a big fa fake. I think he's, so I think he's fake. a fake racist. Yeah, he's a fake racist. He's a fake, fake racist. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ask him next time I see him. The uh, all right, two things with this whole thing. One, I think I know how Kumo got his job. Mm -hmm. He hit it right on the top of the head. He's Italian. He's probably smuggling in those <laughs> illegal Italian meats, you right. know. And because personally, if he could get me some of them good Italian deli meats straight from Italy that you can't get in here, like right. a Cuban cigars, like 
the style of meat there. I'd let him do it. Say what you want. It also probably didn't hurt that his dad was governor, and then he's yeah. his brother's governor. Nah, yeah. nah. I'm sure that's how he gets the illegal uh, deli meat in. Right. Yeah. And that's how he, you know, gives it to his bosses down there. All, you know. all animals are equal, except some are more the equal than others. They taste a lot more delicious right. when you let them. Like, you know. Oh. Anyways, the other thing I wanted to get to is, did you hear him call for violence? No. What do you think he's talking about? He said it's okay to punch people. Uh, you got a point. <laughs> he w- he was advocating more violence than Jones was. Well, a lot more violence, and he's showing that he's part of the group. There's more of us. And then, and then I'm like, dude, bro, are, how do we know you're not there with the mask? I talked about you. Kept, he even set the whole thing up, and I didn't have to cover that, so I wasn't there. Alibi. I, <laughs> I drove by with the newspaper by a you know, camera, you know, c- conveniently. He listen. He six miles away. He is not wrong in that. If you show up to protest racism at, with a sign and you're peaceful, mm-hmm. then you are you are in my mind more moral than the person that thinks it is okay to hate someone because of the color of their skin. Right. I would agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. Okay, the guy who showed up with the American flag. At the Portland or rally or wherever it was, it was I think Portland, where Gavin McInnes, mm-hmm. who is another one who gets completely smeared by the media unfairly, yeah. um, you, y- 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 this guy shows up with an American flag, and mm-hmm. he is a well-known protester in Portland. He shows up to all the rallies. He had an American flag because it was he was going to take back the flag from these racists and Republicans. He's a progressive. He goes and feeds the Occupy ICE folks, those protesters. He is more moral in in this narrow choice, okay? Mm-hmm. Not taking into the, the total morality of him as a person. Just in the instance of him showing up to protest against racism, he is more moral. The people that are less moral than the racist bigots, the homophobes, the 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 uh, anti semites who mm-hmm. are wearing the hoods, yeah, are the members of Antifa that beat the shit out of the guy wearing the American flag, right? <laughs> <laughs> because that's an actual story. This guy showed up to protest, and then Antifa beat the hell out of him because he had an American flag. Wow. And he Just said, prejudice. He Just said, straight up prejudice. We're on the same side, and they said, no, we're not. And so. What I wanted to bring to your attention is something called the non-aggression principle, and it is the foundational principle of libertarianism. It is the ultimate axiom. It is, uh, I think this is a good time to um, play a little run. Well, what about the Libertarian Party? Can you tell us? Goodness gracious, I'm not good at this uh, radio stuff yet, but uh, let me read to you. It really traces back to Murray Rothbard. And it's a foundational axiom that every libertarian, when they join the Libertarian Party, signed something called the uh, non-aggression pledge. And basically it was a way that they were throwing off the FBI uh, because in the early days of the Libertarian Party, they had a lot more radicals. And so the FBI thought that they were a terrorist group. And so in the 70s and 80s, and Timothy McVeigh actually joined the Libertarian Party. Mm-hmm. And so in 96, Steve Dosbach said, you know, we every member signs this pledge and Timothy McVeigh signed it. He didn't mean it. This is why the libertarians are not terrorists. And it was used basically to say libertarians are not terrorists. But this is what Murray Rothbard said about the non-aggression principle. The fundamental axiom of the libertarian theory is that no one may threaten or commit violence, aggress, against another man's person or property. Violence may be employed only against the man who commits such violence, that is, only defensively against the aggressive violence of another. In short, no violence may be employed against a non-aggressor. Here is the fundamental rule from which can be deduced the entire corpus of libertarian theory. Now, in English, that means that if Harry and I are sitting here and I punch Harry, Mm -hmm. then I am in the wrong. Okay, if I punch Harry and then Harry punches me back, he has every right because I have violated his person. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. every single person is their own government. Okay, it's that's why it's called the advocates for self-government, the quiz people. And so each person has a right to govern themselves. They own their own body. And so anyone who comes in and aggresses against that and not, not only um, uses their fists 
but also fraud. They steal. The they these are aggressions against the person that is, and, and so you have a right to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. So, the words are not violence. You can believe whatever backwards awful thing you want. I can think the worst most vile things about Harry I want, mm-hmm. but it does not really matter to Harry in any way, shape, or form as long as I am not using my words in an effort to defraud him Correct. or to steal property from him or to use my fist to punch him, or to steal his property, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, or harm him in any way, uh, way other than hurting his feelings. And so all these people who are worried about hurt feelings, like, I'm sorry that these racist and clans robes said mean things, but the people who are actually beating up others are not more moral. Right. These punches are equal, mm-hmm. Mr. Cuomo. Um, I was going to just going to the non aggressive principle uh, made simple for ponies. <laughs> okay. Every pony owns his or herself and their labor. No pony else has a higher claim over them. Hitting, stealing, and killing are always wrong, even when the castle guards and soldiers are doing it. Use force only in self defense or in the defense of some pony else. Each interaction with other ponies should be voluntary basis only. Never use coercion. Not aggression principle. Made simple for ponies. Right. Uh, let's let's play a couple different ways of explaining this. So, first of all, Ron Paul. And I have to be honest. At the beginning of the every episode, there was a, a clip that the guy that made the intro the used. I, I wasn't crazy about. So I went and tried to find some OG Ron Paul, and I found one that was perfect, and it was about liberty bringing people together. And in in rewatching a lot of Ron Paul's speeches, I got to be honest, he was so positive and optimistic, and it it was refreshing. So if you get a chance, if you're lonely on this Friday Saturday night, and as a libertarian you will be, please go watch some Ron Paul. But uh, this is Ron Paul explaining what the Libertarian Party stands for when he ran in 1988 as a libertarian. It's a little bit about what it stands for. Libertarian Party is based on a firm principle of non-aggression. We all take a pledge when we join the party that we will never initiate force against somebody else. And that is uh, you know, a pretty simple principle that everybody should endorse. It's a principle of what makes civilization. That is, you respect other people's life, you respect other people's property. Thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not murder. It's, it's that simple and most everybody agrees to that. And the next question ought to be is, well, why, does, why should you be different than Republican and Democrats if they tend to agree with that same principle? Well, we, we believe it's such an important moral principle that if we can't take somebody else's property and we can't hurt anybody or we can't intimidate anybody or threaten to use force, we don't think the government can either. But we see the government as the initiator of force to bring about social and economic changes day in and day out. I mean. They, they may not come up to our front door with a gun, and occasionally they do, but we know if we don't deliver our money and our records and do obediently what the government wants in order to give up our portion of our income through the Internal Revenue Service, the gun will be quickly at our door and we will be in prison. So it's the threat and the intimidation, and therefore they're transferring wealth, something that we can't do as individuals. So we as libertarians reject this whole idea of forcible redistribution of wealth, which is the welfare state. Same way in personal liberties. We apply this principle in the area of personal liberties, and although I might want you and think you should leave a cert- lead a certain lifestyle, because I think it's good and right and moral, I have no right to tell you what to do. You know, if, if you want to live a certain way, and I disagree, that's, that's tough. You know, that's your, your choosing. That's the individual's choice, as long as you don't hurt somebody else. So the person has the right to his own life and his liberty, his own lifestyle, as with one special rule, that your lifestyle, the individual's lifestyle, can't hurt somebody else. So if you do things that I disapprove of, I, as a libertarian, am tolerant and I accept that up until the point of no injury to anybody else. Uh, and then I want to play one of the most important libertarians that you've never heard of. His name is Marshall Fritz, and he started the Advocates for Self-Government, which I worked for uh, for uh, all of 2013, and it's basically the people who do the world's smallest political quiz. And and uh, Marshall Fritz basically went around at the beginning of the advocates and the beginning of the quiz, drove around for 364 days, 
visiting people across the country, spreading this quiz, ex- introducing it, dropping off quizzes, and to the point that he would leave a hanger in the closet that said Marshall slept here. So one of the most in, in, incredible libertarians that greatly inspired me, and this is actually the big idea number one. This video is on the path to libertarianism, which if you go to wearelibertarians.com and you look up at the top, it says new to libertarianism, question mark. And uh, big idea number one, it plays this video. So I want you to hear another way to explain this concept of force and words and your personal values. John, if someone were to come into your house, he's uh, wearing a ski mask, he's carrying a shotgun, gets the drop on you, and he robs you of a bunch of your stuff. In your opinion, is, uh, is there something wrong with that? Yeah, yeah sure, he says, yeah, it didn't, that's an easy one. How many of us would agree with John? That's obvious. He's saying, yeah, okay, good. Agile. Two people come into your home. Again, they're wearing the ski mask to get the drop on you and all that sort of stuff. They're, they're cleaning out some of your stuff. You've got this great big built-in television set, and there's this argument that ensues, uh, do they have enough time to get the TV set out of there? And you bring up that your brother-in-law, a uh, highway patrolman, is a uh, do-over any minute <laughs> right, to, to watch the game. It might be best that there, there isn't time. And they sort of decide to vote on it. And it turns out the vote is two to one and they take the TV set. Edgel, does the process of taking your stuff become morally okay if you're allowed to vote on it? If they employ democratic principles and allow you to vote? No. How many of us think that uh, if you get to vote on it, it's okay if people take your stuff? Only if you have a big family. <laughs> Only if you have a big family. <laughs> Martha, three of them come into uh, uh, your house, uh, this time they're not even wearing, um, they're very brazen now, they're not wearing uh, ski masks, uh, they're dressed in suits and all that sort of thing. You can see that they're carrying guns. And they've prepared a, a list of things that they want you to, to give them, uh, including your Mercedes. Uh, but one of them comments, he says, you know, Martha, young, uh, delightful people like you uh, should be in uh, an exercise program. And while we are going to take your Mercedes, we're going to give you this nice Schwinn. And we encourage you to uh, ride to work and ride to play and whatever. So they, they leave and all. Is it okay if someone takes your Mercedes as long as you get something, some return on your investment? You got the Schwinn out of it. Is it okay now? Not a good return. Not a, not a good return, but is it, is the, does the morality of their taking your car change because they left you something behind? You got something good out of it. You got the Schwinn. Did the morality of the theft change because you got something? No. No. How many of us agree with Martha that the morality did not change? Okay, good. Bill, there you are. All right. Four of them come into your... Uh, shop. Same thing with the Mercedes and the list and all this kind of a stuff. But they do one more thing. Uh, Bill, they're going to not only give you a Schwinn, but they're going to give a Schwinn to a poor person down in Paraguay who needs a Schwinn in order for her to get to work and all and support her family. Let's uh, say a couple of things here. One, you have not only a generic belief and in, in, in value in helping a disadvantaged people, but you have a very specific uh, burden on your heart for the people of Paraguay. Uh, you lived down there as a kid, your mom was the ambassador, you went back in the, uh, uh, in the Peace Corps, and you've got this great sense for the people of Paraguay. Bill, does it, is it morally okay for someone to take your Mercedes if they do something that you consider good with some of the proceeds? It's not morally okay. Not, that does not become morally okay, in your opinion. How many of us agree with Bill that even though they're doing something sort of nice that we approve of, it doesn't become more, the morality of it doesn't change? All right. Uh, let's see, what are we up to? Four? Chris, what if we had 14 in the group? Would it be okay then? I don't so. No? <laughs> uh, Richard, 40? Philip, 400? Uh, Linda, 4,000? 4 million, Phyllis? 104 million? Hey, watch it, guys, you're, you're wrecking the carpet. I think libertarianism is the basic principles that your mom and dad, in all likelihood, taught you. They're the principles that my mom and dad taught me. Morality does not come from what the group decides. How many of us tell our uh, teenage children, well, you just find out what everybody else is doing and then you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's not the way we decide morality. Ah, huh? uh, see? See, he's so great. Mm-hmm. Like just that little three minute clip, you just get goosebumps because he's such a great communicator. I, I love Marshall Fritz and. One of the things that I will be responsible for before I die is making sure more people know about Marshall Fritz and that he is in the same league, that he's mentioned in the same league as Ron Paul and Murray Rothbard because Marshall was the person who gave the movement 
in its early in its early first 30 40 years the marketing tool that it uses more than anything else the world's smallest political quiz and uh, just such a dynamite teacher and spent 20 years just going around teaching libertarianism and just a fantastic human being by all accounts so love marshall fritz uh, go on youtube and just google marshall uh, and check him out he's fantastic and upward the upward podcast that we have has several of his training sessions in it so go check that out um, you know, I just I just want to end by reminding you that speech is not violence. And uh, there was an article written this week called Ken, from Kent's Hooligan Libertarian blog <laughs> that you're you're right to yell fire in a theater. And he's exactly right in this. Um, it is your absolute right to say or write whatever you want to say. It may not be wise, and in a free society, you will be held accountable for any harm you cause by doing so. You have the responsibility to not say something untrue, which can cause trouble, but no one has the right to silence you. Most people suffer from a tragic misunderstanding of where co rights come from. I'll give you a hint. They don't come from the government or any of its documents. The Bill, Bill of Rights doesn't create any rights at all. In fact, it doesn't even apply to you or me unless we work for the government. And for those to whom it does apply, its entire purpose is to stop them from violating the rights of individuals. That's right. The Bill of Rights is simply a government shall not, a list, of, a list and a warning that the government has no right to violate natural rights. It does. It makes doing so a crime. Government thus is prohibited from enacting laws that can violate natural rights by the very document which foolishly created it and allows it exist. Since the First Amendment places all speech beyond government regulation or control, uh, it makes no exception for things that can be destructive or stupid. So say what you want to say. After you've weighed the consequences and decide whether they are worth it, then face the consequences like a self-owning human being should. So yell yell fire in a crowded theater if you want. Right. You will face consequences if someone is harmed. Correct. The call to action. That's right. But uh you have every right to say it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Harry. Good good times. Now you know what that music means. You're out on the town. You you you're a dapper man. You love to dress up. Where do you take the lady? Where's the fancy place you take the lady? Well, uh, let's see. Which, it depends on which lady. Like the wife, I usually take her to the Culver's. Okay. You know. All right. So you're going out on the town, <laughs> and you got to look good for your woman. All right. You're taking her to Culver's. All right. This right. is not Dairy Queen. Exactly. Yeah. This is highfalutin stuff. Mm -hmm. right. So let's be honest. Other than Jeffrey Tucker and Harry, libertarians do not dress well. Exactly. But we are libertarians has a solution. It is the new We Are Libertarian store. Get the shirt that men covet and women cannot resist by clicking the link at wearelibertarians.com. And we have women's shirts, too. So send us photos of your shirt at editor at wearelibertarians.com, and we will post it. 